morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Thank you for joining me and everyone else here in chat again today for another live community chat about voiceover and audiobook narration. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Angela. I am a full-time voiceover artist and audiobook narrator. And my channel here on YouTube is dedicated to those of you just getting started out in this wonderful world of voiceover and audiobook narration. And through this channel, I share with you some tips and tricks and techniques that I use every day in my own voiceover business. And then we get together weekly in these Q&A sessions or community chat sessions to talk about a specific topic. If you're not new here, then you know that every week we have a poll based on that topic of discussion for today. So what is today's poll? Today's poll is, where do you find most of your audiobook work? And we've been sort of been doing over the course of the last month or so, we've been doing um, audiobook basics. We've been doing sort of a series on audiobook basics, covering the basics of audiobook narration and the industry. Because that is the uh, main topic of questions uh, that I get almost every day <laughs> is about audiobook work. So we're going to touch on all these different topics as we move along. So having said that, if there's anything specific, if you're watching this now live, or if you're watching this, if you're team replay, if you have something that you'd like us to discuss in a weekly chat, then please put it in the comments or in the chat, and I'll add it to the list of things <laughs> that we can get together and talk about every week. So, but this week, of course, where do you find most of your audiobook work? Because as you know, a lot of people talk about ACX, 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 ACX. ACX is the arm of Amazon where uh, narrators and authors can get together to make books or audiobooks for Audible. So a lot of talk about ACX, but ACX isn't the only platform that makes audiobooks. There's a ton of other ones out there. You know, you could find indie authors and smaller indie publishers on social media, direct marketing. There's Findaway Voices. There's all kinds of new and smaller publishing groups that are coming up almost every day. And um, I did mention the indie ones. So let's talk about it. Let's give some people some ideas if ACX is not available in your country, or if you just don't want to be reliant on one place, then this would be the episode for you to watch. So let's go over to the poll. Oh, we got lots of activity. We have uh, 21 votes so far, and it looks like the vast majority of you said ACX, 57%. Uh, 24% of you said Fiverr or Upwork. 10% um, of you said direct marketing, which is nice. Good job, you guys. And then 10% of you said social media. I think um, in the beginning, we start out with ACX, right? Because it's sort of, I don't want to say a good way to get in, but it's sort of one of the most, um, I guess, easiest ways. I don't know how else to phrase it, but you can find more work faster on ACX than having to go and find it on your own uh, elsewhere, right? ACX is a platform that is very easy to navigate, right? It's all the books are there. You can audition for books. You can put up samples to be found by rights holders who don't want to have, you know, auditions for their books. So it's sort of an easy way to get uh, audiobook work. But if again, if you don't want to just count on that one platform, how else can you find audiobook work? Well, with the poll, not only ACX, but we do have freelance marketplaces where there are a lot of people that either don't understand, don't want to deal with, don't want to listen through a million auditions on ACX and want to source their own narrator through other means via Fiverr, via Upwork, via other freelance marketplaces, right? So Fiverr and Upwork are good places to find them where they can reach out to you or Fiverr mainly where they reach out to you. You can't audition for anything, but Upwork, you can. There's, um, unlike Fiverr, Upwork has two ways to find work where you can uh, create a profile and people can find you and reach out to you, or you can uh, make bids on work that is listed. They have like a a job posting 
a area where you can find audiobooks and then create a proposal to do that audiobook. Direct marketing, of course, is when you get onto, you know, um, LinkedIn, Google, any kind of search engine of your choice, really, and to find indie authors, uh, smaller publishers that are looking for either narrators to add to their roster, or maybe you just reach out to them and say, hey, do you have, do you have a roster? Do you, how, how do you have in-house narrators or do you use remote or, you know, um, I guess, yeah, remote narrators, <laughs> you know, with their own home studio. Um, do you have room on your roster, right? Or social media, I find, is really gaining some momentum. It always has, but I think even more so now that more and more people, and don't laugh at me, a lot of people give me the old roll eye when I say TikTok, but TikTok is a force that is not to be overlooked. There are tons of not only voice actors, but there are audiobook narrators of all kinds, indie publishers, indie authors, major publishers. I mean, everybody who is anybody that in my circles anyway that I know of is on TikTok. And this is how they're making connections with each other. So don't overlook it. Um, Same thing goes with Instagram, Twitter. I mean, if you're available, if you make yourself seen and make it known that you are an audiobook narrator, and this is what you sound like, so right? So posting content that is not just words, but also images with some audio or just images, maybe some video. And again, I've said it a million times, but video is, I think, where all the eyeballs are, right? Which is why we have all of these social media platforms that have bite-sized video content, right? And when I say bite-sized, I mean like as opposed to YouTube, where you have 10, 20 minute videos on things. TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, they all have uh, YouTube too. They have YouTube shorts. They have smaller bite-sized videos, you know, 15 seconds to three minutes, roughly. So posting content will definitely get you seen. And direct marketing and social media are both free. They just cost you time, right? So definitely don't overlook those two avenues. Um, Now that I've been blathering on for a couple of minutes, we've got a few more votes and it looks like uh, ACX is still the the forerunner here. And then 25% of you said Fiverr Upwork, 7% of you said direct marketing and 7% of you said social media. So I'm hoping that something that I've said already or something that we talk about today during the course of this chat will inspire you to try new avenues in finding more or additional audiobook work sources. So let's get to the comments. Tangent number one. (laughs) Oh, wait, hang on. Let me take this off the screen. So many buttons. Button, button. Who's got the button? All right. Who's first in today? We have Owen Runk. Welcome, Owen. Hopefully this comment goes through and away here early or here way early. I'm new to voiceover. Well, sort of. I have a background in live sound and vocal performance. Well, welcome to the family, Owen. And then Owen says, I'm currently taking a VO course through Udemy. Now there's a handful of them there. My question is about standing out in Fiverr. I'm American and I also speak fairly decent German. Well, that's that's handy. How can I use this ability to stand out? Well, I would definitely make it known that you speak German in any way, shape, or form. Um, And that could be on, uh, I think German is a language available on ACX, is it not? I think it is. So if it is, then make some samples in German and then also make it known on any other platform, social media, direct marketing, that you also do speak German. That will give you a little bit of an edge in that respect. Oh, and then says, I don't think my German is quite good enough to do VO in German, but I was thinking of offering my services to the German speaking world since English is widely needed. Any ideas? I would say yes, yes, and yes. It sounds like you're on the right path, but you're a little unsure if it's viable. I would say it absolutely is. Uh, follow your gut. You're on the right path. Just do what you think is right because it sounds like you already have some, some uh, direction. So go for it. Trust your gut. Oh, and then says, I'll be watching the replay later, which is why I'm commenting so early. 
I'm a trucker by day, so I don't have much time for live interactions at the moment. Totally understandable. And I, you know what? I have actually met and worked with uh, big rig drivers or truckers who are also VO artists who set up like a small little area in the cab of their truck to record voiceovers and audiobooks. So I know it can be done. Not just that, but I've also worked with several people who live in an RV full time or a small, um, like a bus conversion or something like that, where they've also set aside a small section of their RV to record a voiceover and audiobook. So it can be done. And even if you're sitting in your apartment right now and you're like, there's no way in heck I can make this work in where I currently have. Well, you know what? There are truck drivers and there are people who live in RVs full time who can do it. So it can be done. It might take a little bit of creativity, but you can do it. So don't don't uh, don't discount your your creativity or your uh, what the heck was I going to say? I think you guys know what I'm getting at. A train derailed. Owen says, also, what communities do you have? Facebook group, Discord, where can I join? Absolutely. I have a, a Facebook group called the VO Workshop. Uh, all the links to every way to connect with me are in the description of the video. You can find me everywhere on social media, uh, here on YouTube, of course, the Facebook group, the VO Workshop. And then I also have my Platinum group, which is on found on my website in the plans and pricing. It is a paid membership. But with that, we meet every week, every Thursday night for at least two hours. And it's a lot of fun. Everybody brings a drink. It's not super like sterile and, you know, everyone has fun. And then I have a few other things that I offer with the membership as well. But there are a few ways that you can uh, hang out with me and everybody else. Dylan says, good morning. Good morning, Dylan. I've only done audiobooks on ACX. I keep trying to get away from them and focus on shorter projects, but they keep pulling me back in. And that's okay, too. And that's okay, too. If it's working for you right now, that's great. But I would still, at the same time, start planting some seeds and building some foundations elsewhere. And not putting all your eggs into one basket is always a smart way to go, right? So in the short periods of time where you're not super busy narrating books, Dylan, then start building profiles and things elsewhere. You've already started with um, posting more content on TikTok, which is good. So keep doing that. Just keep doing what you just keep doing what you can when you can. Dwight is here. Hey, Dwight. Hey, fellow Angelinos from sunny New England. How you doing, Dwight? Harrison Jones says we be jamming. Nice. We be jamming with the intro music. I do that too. If that's what you're talking about. I'm assuming you are. Dylan says, I suppose I could amend my answer, but latest book came directly from the rights holder, but we're still going through ACX. That was another thing that I wanted to touch on today. If you have somebody contact you or you make a connection with somebody off of ACX, be it Fiverr, Upwork, direct marketing, um, what was the other one? Social media. Audiobooks are pretty much formatted the same way. Any which pl uh, uh, platform, <laughs> that's a word I'm looking for, any which platform that you're that you're working on are pretty much all formatted the same way. Um, maybe subtle differences here and there, but for the most part, the same. So audiobook files are going to be formatted the same for ACX as they would be anywhere else. So if you have somebody you're working with off of ACX, instead of you, if you worked on ACX before, you know that you narrate the book and then you upload the chapters to ACX, right? Um, if you're working with somebody off ACX, you just send your client all of the files formatted appropriately, like ACX compliant, and then they in turn will take those files and do with them what they will, right? They'll take them to their distributor of choice and then they will upload those files there. So nothing really changes apart from instead of you uploading all the files to ACX, you just send all the files to the client. Now, how do you get those files to the client? Well, if it's on Up Upwork or Fiverr, let's start with Fiverr first because Fiverr is a little bit different from Upwork. Fiverr has expanded the, um, the gig space availability to upload files so you can deliver all of the files in multiple deliveries if you have to. 
if it's a big book of like 30 files or so, I'll upload like 11 in delivery one, 11 in the next, you know, in the next delivery, delivery number two, I'll just upload them all individually in multiple deliveries. Upwork, on the other hand, they only have like a 25 megabyte allowance for space for uploading files. So what you can do there is upload all the files to a Google Drive folder or to WeTransfer. If you don't have a whole lot of Google Drive space, you can use WeTransfer, which is a great service where you upload all the files to WeTransfer and then they store them on their network and they give you a link. You send that link to the client, they click the link, download the files, and then you don't need any additional storage at that point, right? Um, if it's uh, through email or something else like that, same thing. You can use a Google Drive link or WeTransfer link um, or Dropbox. I keep forgetting about Dropbox. You can use Dropbox link as well. <sighs> Victoria VO says, just retired and getting started in my VO journey. Well, welcome to the family, Victoria. And congratulations on retiring. Uh, Pamela's here. Hey, Pam. Hey, from Port of LA. Help me. I'm melting. You're probably drowning. <laughs> Is that why you're melting? <laughs> what a world. What a world. Man, how are you guys doing out there? I saw the news last night. That's crazy. It's headed this way, but it won't be nowhere. It won't be anywhere near as bad as it was there. That's crazy. MG Stevens says, good morning, Angela and everyone. Good morning, MG. How you doing? Dylan Holt says, stay safe, Pam. Yes. Have you started building your ark yet? <laughs> Hope you're all right, Pam. Everybody else in SoCal. I am Paximus. How you doing, Paximus? I haven't seen you in a while. Good morning, Angela. How are you today? Glad to be here with you and everyone. I am still working on my first recording, so haven't been able to get to work yet, but learning a lot here. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad that this is at least giving you some tidbits of information. These weekly com uh, uh, chats <laughs> that we word chat that we have. Um, but I want to know. That, I mean, you've been. You've been here for a while. I've known you for a while now, and you're still working on your first recording. Why is that, Paximus? Is it time or is it self-imposed? Inquiring minds want to know. Mary HPVO says, good morning, Angela. Good morning, Mary. Uh, anyone find a way to record while it's pouring rain? Oh, I know. What I typically do, uh, mainly here in the desert, when it rains, most of the rain that we get is not necessarily in the winter time. It's usually in the summer with the monsoons, which of course includes thunder and lightning and things like that. So usually during a monsoon, especially if there's a thunderstorm overhead, I don't do any recording at all. A, it's noisy. And B, just out of precaution, I'll turn everything off. Everything is off. <laughs> Everything's off and, and usually unplugged. Uh, just for caution's sake. But that's that's a tough one. Um, yeah, I don't have any way, unless you have like a whisper room or a Studio Bricks booth that is completely or mostly soundproof, that's going to be hard to get around, Mary. I feel your pain, though. It should be, it should be pouring here later on today, so I feel your pain. Ben is here. Hey, Ben. More accurately, I auditioned through ACX. No work yet, but soon I am sure. Yes, absolutely. Just keep auditioning. And remember to also post samples, right? Remember, 40% of books or contracts offered are found from the sample section, not so much the auditioning, right? So 60% of, of jobs are booked through auditioning and 40% are booked through samples being found in the sample section. So don't overlook that. Make sure that you're posting samples as well. Dylan says uh, to Mary HP, just market it as immersion audio. Yes, if it was something that required like rain in the background. <laughs> Nick Davis says, uh, question. If you are part of book clubs, writers, guilds, etc., how do you approach authors about narrating their work without feeling slimy? That's a great question. And I don't think, 
I think even with the best intentions and the best well-written copy or whatever it is that you're sending to them, there's still going to be a little, for me anyway, a still a little bit of ick because <laughs> you just feel that way, right? But you have to remember that this is a small business. You are a small business. So therefore, you do need to market and you do need to get out there and make it known that you do what you do. So in order to survive and grow, you have to market yourself. So having said that, you could, if you are in like a, like a Facebook group, perhaps, you could make a post that says, hey, um, not only are you a narrator, um, something, something to the effect, I mean, don't quote me exactly, but you could make a couple of different pieces of content that perhaps are promoting other writers, maybe a finished audiobook, perhaps. Hey, guys, we just finished this audiobook for this author and check it out. Um, right. You don't want to have to be like you don't have to be direct sales like, hey, hire me. I'm the best in the world or anything like that. You can just kind of update with what you're doing, maybe what you're currently reading, engage with other authors and, you know, don't just be it's all about me, you know, kind of content. Engage with the other authors and writers, but then make it known in your own way of who you are and what you do and how to reach you, right? If you're thinking that you want to reach out to a writer, or um, excuse me, uh, an author directly about narrating their audiobook, just make it known. Hey, have you ever thought about, you know, extending your reach with your book, right? Audiobooks are still gaining popularity. They're still, I mean, it's kind of almost given anymore that if you write a book, you have it in at least three different versions. You have it in ebook, you have it in print, and you have it as an audiobook, right? Hey, congratulations on your new book. Have you considered making an audiobook version of this? Instead of going through ACX or anywhere else, you know, I'm, you can work directly with me kind of a thing, right? Because I, I think would think from an author's perspective, that would save me a whole lot of time I already maybe know you from being in this group, right? I don't know. But you could sort of use that approach, perhaps. That's what I'm thinking. But I don't, I don't really think the slime feeling really goes away. May, maybe because I'm just introverted and it just makes me go, Egh. but <laughs> but it never really goes away. Kelseroni. <laughs> you changed your username. I like it. Angela, I honestly haven't done audiobooks yet and not sure I will. I just really like this community. <laughs> I'm glad you like this community and we adore you. But why not? Why not? Why are you why are you not sure you will? I think the reason you found me is because you were looking to perhaps get into this. You were in your research phase and you probably stumbled across one of my videos. And then you're like, hey, she does live stuff. And then you started hanging out. I mean, you never, was that never a part of your plan? I think you should, Kelsey. Come on. Come on, Kelsey. Joy is here. The embodiment of joy. Hello, everyone from sunny 38 degrees Southfield, Michigan. <sighs> Uh, well, is it raining there? <laughs> uh, Kelseroni says, I prefer short form narration, commercial and character. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Because any kind of longer form narration is definitely more work. It's definitely a marathon. Definitely a marathon. I think you should try it though, Kelsey. Joe Pace says, what do you mean direct marketing? Um, like if you are on LinkedIn, you're on social media, you use any kind of search engine that you choose and just start Googling people, right? Small, um, mainly for more like uh, production companies, audiobook production companies, indie publishers, things like that. And then ask them if they have room on their roster or if they have a roster and or do they have like an in-house stable of narrators that they use or do they employ remote narrators to do some of their work 
You could also make connections on social media, again, LinkedIn, all, all the other social media platforms, Instagram, t uh, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, and find people who write books, authors, <laughs> indie publishers, and then make it known, reach out to them directly. Hey, I'm an audiobook narrator. I'm available for you. I mean, however you want to phrase it, but that is what I say, direct marketing, and you could email them. Right. If you find their website, you find some information about them, you find out their email address or some way to contact them, you reach out via email and say, hey, hi, this is what I do. This is who I am. I'm available. Right. Uh, Juan Alvarez. Hey, Juan. Hello from Dallas, Texas. I am conflicted with accepting royalty share only projects. I feel that the lion share is scummy or chat GPT built books from people with no track record thoughts. I can't say that that is wrong because those are out there. And I know that ACX is actively trying to put the kibosh on those kinds of books. So I think at some point they will continue to be weeded out. I'm not saying that they aren't there because they are, but that's not necessarily true for every single royalty share book. I've worked with a lot of amazing authors who just prefer to go the royalty share route instead of the per finished hour route. So don't overlook royalty share books just because you think that that's what they are. They're not all that. So don't overlook them. Um, if you find a book that is interesting and you can see most of the time enough of the copy to get a context of if it's written well, you're enjoying it, you can get into it, right? It's something that you will enjoy narrating and producing and it doesn't appear to be written by ChatGPT, then definitely audition for that book. But it's not always the case, right? Uh, Facebook user... This is Colette. Colette just got your book, Dylan. What a great read. What a great listen. <laughs> Mary HP. <laughs> More coffee. Uh, Mary HP. I quit. Says to Dylan, perfect immersion experience. I think I just short circuited. Yeah, with the rain. Victoria Vio says, I listened to audiobooks to learn and came across a new publisher called Bolinda, who is a world leading audiobook and technology company. Does anyone know about them and how to be a narrator for them? A world leading audiobook and technology company. Those two words together, audiobook and technology, uh, make me a little hesitant. Are they virtual voices or AI sort of stuff? Or is it actual human narrators? That's what I would look into. But that really goes for anybody that you're looking at to reach out to. Do your research on them first, right? If you find a like an indie publisher or, you know, a small newer publisher, you got to remember that virtual voices are probably more cost effective for some of these companies and they don't want to use human narrators just because just sheer cost and time perhaps. So I would definitely look into them and see if they are in fact using human narrators or virtual voices. That's what I would look at, but I have not heard of Bolinda, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. As I said at the beginning of this uh, video that there are a lot of new companies popping up all the time. Just because I haven't heard of them doesn't really mean anything. I don't know everybody, <laughs> right? But if you're watching this in Team Replay, or if you're in the chat and you have heard of them, then please give your comments uh, to help Victoria out. Thank you. Writer Dude said, good morning, everyone. I'm not late, just multitasking this morning. Ah, donuts. Where's the donuts, man? You gotta have the donuts. Bear338 says, good morning, writer dude. Uh, Darby Mori says, I just set up my ACX profile yesterday. Slow start as I'm still practicing reading into the mic. Nervous, but hopeful that my voice will appeal to audiences. And I think that statement pretty much sums up everything we feel at the very beginning. So all normal, all normal experience, right? 
I think even after a couple of years into this, I still was like kind of cringy at the sound of my own voice. I don't know if that ever completely goes away, but you do get more comfortable hearing yourself speak outside of your head. <laughs> the more and more you do it, the more comfortable you get with it. So congratulations on setting up your profile. And this is an exciting new endeavor that you're embarking on. So welcome to the narrator family. And that's good. Keep practicing. It's going to take a lot of practice, especially in the beginning, not only with uh, breath control and performance, but also learning your DAW, how everything works together, right, and harmony, getting your audio quality under control, all that stuff is all completely normal. And it does take a little bit of time. But once you get it all dialed in, you're off to the races. But don't stop learning. Always continue to learn and grow and train. Bear338 says, off topic, I have a good, or I have a gold board and end of February, I will be in your classes studio, will be complete. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Restart. Off topic, I have a gold board and end of February, I will be in your classes, studio will be complete, website done, and business cards ordered. That's awesome. Congratulations. Having the website done and business cards ordered. You know, you're probably going to go, Angela, why didn't you tell me this before? But a good thing to consider if you didn't already put them on your business cards or if you're just considering your business cards for anybody else, putting a QR code on your business cards that goes directly to your website, highly recommend. And February, end of February, we'll be seeing you in group I hope so. That would be awesome. Um, Joya's here. Hey, Joya. I record in the rain, thunderstorms, and with fire trucks and police driving by. What's funny is that I have a DIY booth. It's all about your mic and editing process. Hit me up, Mary. I'll show you how. She is a DAW noise sound wizard. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks for helping, Joya. Uh, Masonry Construction says, uh, while I love audio work, I'm not yet done an audiobook. Oh, I've not yet done an audiobook. Mostly due to only short projects, 50 to $200, and I'm done in an hour or two. I am in awe of you audio bookers, though. Yeah, I mean, it is work. Audiobooks take work. They take time and they take work. And not everybody's up for that right? Because it does take uh, quite the commitment from you as an audio booker <laughs> to get them done. So, I mean, but you can't, I mean, you can do them both. You can make yourself available for any kinds of, any types of voiceover and long form narration, both, and then have a nice mix of both too. But it's hard to do them, uh, audio books, if you have a very tight or packed schedule. Or you just dedicate your nights to being in the booth instead of sleeping, <laughs> like a lot of us do. Victoria Vio says, would you be willing to share your origin story? <laughs> what made you want to begin your journey? Uh, and did you have imposter syndrome? My biggest stumbling block is imposter syndrome. Victoria, I don't know if I want to bore everybody with my, with my, my story again, but because I've said it so many times, but... The um, Cliff's Notes version is I, uh, I came across a, a, an interview. It was an audiobook narrator interview in while I was eating lunch one day in my corporate job. And I was like, man, I don't know why I never thought of it before. Because <laughs> I've listened to audiobooks on tape and stuff almost my entire life. Somebody has to narrate that stuff. So I was like, oh, my God. And then, of course, the research phase started. So I did all my research. And then I decided to buy the gear. And after a lot of falling on my face with where to put my studio, mic placement, DAW, right? Um, about a year and a half later after that, after I bought my equipment and started my journey, um, I went full time. Somewhere between a year and a half to two years, I went full time. And uh, four years later, here I am. It's almost four years exactly. The end of February will be 
four years that I've been full time. Super exciting. Um, but what made you want to begin your journey? Because I wanted to not be an absentee parent. Being in the car business, I was in the car business for 20 years before finding voiceover. Um, there was a lot of people in that industry that were sadly absentee parents just because of the demanding workload and the time away and just being on call pretty much all the time with not to mention the stress and all the things that come with it with any job. Right. But I wanted to be available for my son as he was growing up. So that was my major why. And I think that why is what carried me through to where I am now. Because now I can. I can be there for him and do all the things that I want to do as a mom. Um, imposter syndrome, yes, I don't think it ever goes away. But I think the biggest skill or the best skill that you can have is to learn how to deal with it. Right? knowing that there isn't really, I don't really consider other narrators, voice artists as competition. I see them as other unique, like options, right? Because I've said it a million times, voice actors represent the world in my view. So there's a need for just about every voice, every accent, every language to represent that specific culture or segment of humanity, <laughs> right? So I don't see other voice actors and things as competition. I see them as other options. So, um, and I think we all have something unique to bring to the table in not only the way we sound, but the way that we perceive the world around us and our life experiences, because we bring those experiences into what we deliver, right? We use our experiences in doing the work that we do. So, um, when imposter syndrome comes knocking on your door, you just say, hey, shut the heck up. I'm doing this because I love it, because I want to, because of your why, right? Insert your why here. And you can't tell me what to do. Imposter syndrome is mainly, it mainly comes from fear, right? Most of the things that stop us from doing what we want to do comes from fear. So you have to take, you know, put your foot down and say, hey, I'm not letting you decide where I go or what I do, Mr. Fear. I decide. I decide where I go and what I do. I'm not letting you decide where I go and what I do. So once you can do that, imposter syndrome doesn't come and visit as often, every once in a while, perhaps. But it's all in how you deal with it, right? Totally understandable it will go away and stop visiting so often in time. Oh, we have a super chat. Hold on. Hold on. Sean Lester. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Uh, assuming audiobooks are marathons and commercials are sprints with YouTube videos being middle distance, do you see yourself as a marathoner? For the most part, yes. Most of what I do is long form or longer form narration. I don't do a whole lot of commercials and things like that. I do a lot of video games, meditation, e-learning, and audiobooks. I do mostly long form. That's kind of my wheelhouse. So I guess I am a marathoner. I'm going to add that to my title. <laughs> Voice actor, audiobook narrator, and marathoner. <laughs> but I would also consider... For the most part, YouTube video narration could be a marathon as well, because even if they're shorter, they're usually in bulk, right? You usually have bulk scripts. So that's still, I would still consider that to be a marathon. Faux show. So then you're a marathoner as well. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Sean. I appreciate the super chat. Eric is here. Hey, Eric. Uh, good morning. Just checking in while I eat my bagel. What's on your bagel? What's on your bagel? What kind of bagel? I must know. Leslie says, good morning, Angela and everyone. Last bit of my booth redo today and tomorrow, then new samples to record. Yay! Going to try a few different publishing companies like Ahab and PFP, as well as ACX. I know what you meant. <laughs> good for you. Kelseroni says, are you friends with Ronnie Butler? He's another audiobook narrator, great guy. Um, 
I can't say that I recognize the name, but again, there's so many narrators out there. I don't know everybody. Um, I can't say that I recognize that name. Kelsey says, I keep forgetting to switch to professional account to come to these live streams. And do what you got to do, sister. It's okay. Dylan says, thank you so much, Colette. I love this community. You all rock. You rock, Dylan. You rock, brother. Leslie says, not Arab. Ahab. I know. <laughs> I know what you mean. Joy West says, thanks. Of course. Darling girl. Dylan says uh, to Eric, congrats on finishing your latest project. Tw did you finish that already? 26 hours sounds like a monumental project. It is. That's a lot. 26 hours finished. 26 finished hours. That's nuts. James says, uh, hi, Angela. Got approved on LibriVox and got my first two chapters and set up my ACX profile. Finally stopped procrastinating. learning. Good for you, James. Good for you, James. Question. Can I use my LibriVox recording for ACX samples? I would say yes, because LibriVox is typically books in the public domain. I just double check. But if it is in the public domain, then absolutely yes. Bear338 says yes in group. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, my God. QR code is genius. If you think about where we were just a few years ago when nobody was touching anything, <laughs> right? If that ever happens again, or just for ease of use, or for if you hand somebody your business card and your QR code is on it, instead of storing that card, because you remember back in the day, I don't know, some of you will probably relate, but you had a wallet full of business cards to contact people. <laughs> instead of having to store your card from their point of view, they can just take a, a shot of your of your website, of the QR code, go to your website, check out your stuff. Or if they do keep cards, they can always reference your website that way. Instead of having to type it in, they can just go with their phone or whatever and go straight to it. So it's just an alternative way, especially in this day and age where everything is online, just an alternative way for them to find you and find you quickly. Kelseroni says, leaving early. Everyone have a great day. And as Dave Fanoi says, book something. Absolutely. Have a great day, Kelseroni. Kelseroni says, I love Mel Robbins' quote. You don't have imposter syndrome. You're just a beginner. I like that too. I like that too. That works. 66 Sky Blue Pony says, ha, procrastinate learning. Love that term. That pegs where I am. And we've all been in that stage. We've all been there in some way, shape, or form. But I think the key is recognizing that you are. And procrastinate learning is basically, for those in, inquiring minds watching, procrastinate learning is basically you're keeping yourself in the learning stage because you think that you're not ready. You're using it as sort of a crutch or an excuse to not move forward because you haven't learned this, you don't have this piece of equipment. You're keeping yourself back from moving forward because you're telling yourself that you're still learning. You're still in the research phase. And it's very easy to get stuck in that stage. So giving it a name, recognizing it for what it is, and then making the decision to step out of the procrastinate learning stage and move forward is key. Hard, but definitely doable. Julia says, hey, Angela, sorry I'm late. I, where's all the donuts? Come on, people. Ryder dude's late. Julia's late. There's no donuts. JCC AOL's got the donuts. If you're late, I mean, it's a rule. If you're late, you bring donuts. JCC AOL brought the donuts. <laughs> My stomach's growling. <laughs> Never fails. 66 Sky Blue Pony says, I totally get imposter syndrome. I've worked with professional announcers who couldn't stand the sound of their own voice. Yeah, I don't I don't know if that ever completely goes away. Because I still I still record stuff and in my head I think I nailed it. And then I go back and listen and I go, Uh, what was I thinking? 
or vice versa even, because sometimes that imposter syndrome is coming along with me on that ride to listen back to that first take. And I go, you know, maybe it's my brain telling me that it was just, ugh, right? But it really isn't. Or vice versa, where I think as I'm recording it that it sounds like hot garbage. But when I listen back to it, it's actually, it's fine. It's, it's better than what I thought it was going to be. So I don't know why that happens. But again, recognizing that we do these things and then just like dismissing it for what it is, just overthinking or, you know, the imposter monster or whatever it is, and then moving past it and either A, fixing it or B, you know, leaving it as it is because it's probably fine. <laughs> it's probably fine. And we just overthink things. Yeah. Been there. Leslie says, I switched to dot card. And that has been so helpful at conferences and meetups. Connects to website with all your info. That's cool. That's cool. Yep. Technology, man. Use it. Use it. Jason says, I, as I have been trying to work out my recording space and the technical details of doing this professionally, I know I am totally guilty of procrastinating learning. Brother, we all have. <laughs> we all have. It's okay. Uh, Joyce says, hi, Angela. An author on Upwork offered to pay me $360 to narrate a 100,000 word book. No. Let's see, a 100,000 word book. Let's just bring up the handy dandy calculator here. So a 100,000 word book, whoops, just really quick. Divide that by 9,300 words to um, equate a finished hour. That is a 10 hour book. A little over 10 hours, 10 hour, 10.8 hours, right? So if we... Would you say 360 divide that by 10.7? That's $360 is roughly $33 per finished hour. If that's okay with you, just know that that almost 11 hour book is going to take you probably 30, 40 something hours to do. If $360 is enough compensation for that, that's your decision. But just know that's about $33 per finished hour. So it's going to come down to, A, what you feel is right, if that's going to be adequate compensation for all that time of work, and, and B, oh gosh, where did B go? <laughs> I had a B. Okay, so A, is that going to be adequate compensation, and B, Oh my gosh, I'm hoping it'll come back to me. I don't want to hold up, you guys. I just had a brain fart. But um, ultimately, it's up to you, Joy. It's it's up to you if you want to take that or not. It's up to you. Uh, Bear338 says, I have my procrastinate learning certificate, and it was Angela's words, and a gentle shove forward got me going. We love you, Angela. Oh, thank you. We should have a procrastinate learning certificate. <laughs> I'm going to make one on Canva and put it on my website so you can print it out, recognize it, and then move on. Coffee with Sean says, are you 100% audiobooks or do shorter reads? I do everything in voiceover from <clears throat> phone greetings to commercials to video games to e-learning to audiobooks. I do everything that requires a voice podcast intros and outros, everything. Uh, Masonry Construction says, I must be posting here incorrectly. You jumped over all three posts. Is there a trick to this posting on YouTube? Um, if you have links or something that the YouTube filters deem risky, then the comment won't be posted. I didn't skip over them. I promise I didn't see them. They weren't here. So that could be it. If there's something in the words the filters think is risky, it won't show it. Bear338 says, I got a donut maker for my birthday. <gasps> I want a donut maker. My birthday's in about a month. I want a donut maker. Two months. Hot Pink Bear says, I'm trying to do my samples and I keep second guessing myself. Does my voice really suit this? Not sure how to get over that. 
um, to stop second guessing yourself and just throw one out there and try it and see what response you get. Because you are, you're probably overthinking it. I, we've all been there. But I think the best thing for you to do at this stage is just to get a recording done, whether you think it's good or not, and get some peer feedback, right? If you're in my Facebook group, my Facebook group, the VO Workshop, I allow you in that group to post a demo to get feedback. So post it there and ask everybody what they think before you start showing yourself to um, rights holders and authors and publishers. Do that, but do something. Don't just stay in that stage of I stink, I stink, I stink, overthinking, overthinking. Move forward. Uh, Coffee with Sean says, are you, I think that was from your previous, if so, what percent of your work is divided into what different kinds of reads? Um, I think this, the answer to this question is probably going to be different for everybody because a lot of people have preferences and what they like to do. I would say that, <clears throat> I would say 30% is audiobooks. Um, maybe another 30% is meditation and affirmations, things like that. And then maybe 20% uh, voicemail, voice greetings, and then 20% video game, I think is how I would break it up. Just off the top of my head. Joya says, have you seen Mike Russell's new video on how to use AI voices for your voiceovers? No, I have not. He's promoting the dark side. Everyone has their opinions and ability to do what they want, but I'm not going to go watch the video not going to do it. Masonry Construction says, Nick Davis, basic marketing can begin with education. Let those book authors know that you are a resource. Help them to get to know the pitfalls and paths to get an audiobook done. Be helpful. No slime. There you go. There you go. Make yourself a like a resource, just like you said. Offer your insight into audiobook production, what to do, what not to do. It's a great idea. JCC AOL says, I will buy you a donut maker. Happy birthday, Angela. Then, oh my God, I don't know if I would ever stop. I'd be making donuts like every day. I think that would probably not be good for my heart, to be honest. <laughs> Joy says, Angela, what is the formula to calculate per finished hour for audiobook? Um, a finished hour is 9,300 words. So whatever the final word count is, just divide that by 9,300 words. And then that resulting number is the number of hours, finished hours. Eric says, first, plain bagel with cream cheese. Second, did finish. Got the contract December 7th. A cold took me out for two weeks. Still worked three to four, three to four days a week, three to four hours a day. That's awesome plain with just regular clean cream cheese yawn come on eric come on eric it's not even like an everything bagel or it's got some locks on it or something i'm surprised by that you're usually pretty bougie <laughs> leslie says okay the california rain clouds just showed up in west texas yeah it's like an atmospheric river or something it's like a big to do it's like drenching and flooding california so I'm not surprised that the surrounding states are going to see some some pieces of that. Caesar says, oh, hello, Angela. Hello, Caesar. Where you been? I hope you brought the donuts. I'm not late. My brain was just in screensaver mode. I've been awake for three days. Oh, insomnia. That's the worst. I've been looking into how to create a live performance FX rack for podcasters and streamers. Oh, that's cool. Very helpful, Caesar. Very Good thinking. JCC AOL says, oh, but these are healthy donuts. Healthy donuts? That's like an oxymoron. <laughs> How do you have healthy donuts? <laughs> Potato bagel with garlic hummus. See, there you go. I mean, plain bagel with plain cream cheese, Eric? Come on. Come on. Bear says, made banana bread donuts with peanut butter icing for my... Fr oh, my God. Okay, 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 okay. So I, maybe, maybe it's a healthy donut. Okay, maybe, maybe that's a healthy donut. <laughs> All right, you guys, I have got to get running. I have got 
work to get back to. So I thank you for everyone that spent some time with us today and participated into the chat. I always appreciate you guys coming in, showing up, sharing your opinions and experience. It not only helps everyone watching this in the live, but also in the replay. So I really appreciate that. And again, if you have something that you would like us to discuss either live in the chat or in an upcoming chat, like for team replay, if you're a team replay, then please leave it in the comments and um, perhaps we can get to it here in the coming weeks. But thank you everybody mu for so much for coming <laughs> along with my mouth today and I'll see everybody next week. Bye.